Welcome to another episode of Riding and Wrenching, the biggest little YouTube channel on the entire interwebs. I am your host, Q the Rider, and I'm back in the garage. I completed a 1600 mile trip over the weekend, and I wanna to put together this short video to talk to you about how my sound system performed. Before I get started, I'm gonna give you a quick recap of what was done to my bike. A new head unit from Soundstream. This is the Soundstream HDHU 14 Plus. I've replaced the speakers and the fairing to Precision Power speakers. Precision Power is from the same company that brings you uh, the Soundstream radio. Also replaced my uh, Tour Pack speakers with Precision Power speakers and I added six by nine speakers in the saddlebag. And driving all of that is a Precision Power amplifier that's underneath the fairing. It's a phenomenal system and so we're gonna talk about how it performed on my first long distance trip. Now, I'm gonna talk about three different things. We're gonna talk about functionality, we're gonna talk about sound quality, and a couple of other observations that I made out on the road. So let's talk about the functionality. The first thing I wanna point out are the hand controls. The hand controls on the right side of the bike, the little joystick down here, uh, gives you uh, the ability to control the volume. So up and down controls the volume, and if you push the button in, that will mute the volume. So that's unique uh, to the Soundstream system because you cannot control the volume on the right side with the Harley head unit. Now, something else that's different here is the info button also on the right side. Uh, this button does not provide any information about the bike, including temperature or anything else. Uh, this button under Soundstream, what it does, it toggles between your Apple CarPlay, if your phone is hooked up uh, via USB, or the uh, radio, or basically the Soundstream menu. So you can toggle back and forth between the two. And all of those features are pretty useful while you're out on the road. On a long distance trip, when you're on the road for hours and hours, at some point you're gonna be riding with just one hand. And it's nice to be able to move the volume up and down without having to switch hands to the left. Now on the left hand over here, you can also control the volume. Uh, you can skip tracks, which is fantastic in case a Janet Jackson song comes on and you swipe right and skip over to the next song. You can also toggle back and forth between your Apple CarPlay and your Soundstream radio by pushing the joystick button in. So those are the, uh, how you can manipulate the uh, system using your hand controls. Now that's all of the functionality that you have. You can't manipulate the Apple CarPlay screen using the hand controls and hopefully that's something that's corrected in maybe the next version of the radio because it would be nice to be able to do that and I'll explain to you why a little bit later. Now, the other thing that I did, I tested out my Cardo Pack Talk and basically it works the same, uh, this Soundstream radio works the same string, uh, same way that the Harley radio does in that you cannot connect the Cardo Pack Talk directly via Bluetooth to the bike. You're gonna connect it to your phone, but all of the display in terms of your maps and everything else will still be on the display. So it still works well and it works just like what we're used to doing with your Harley radio. But basically the CarPlay functions the exact same way it does in my car. All right, the next thing we're gonna talk about is the most important part, the sound quality. Two words to describe it, loud and clear. It's amazing, it sounds phenomenal. I played a variety of different types of music. I played rock music, I played soft rock, I played my classic R&B music, we played some of my hip hop music, and I also listened to podcasts. And everything sounds amazing cruising at 80 plus miles an hour. I mean, assuming that that was the speed limit, I never violated the law. But anyway, whatever your cruising speed is, it sounds amazing, and that's in large part thanks to the tuning that uh, Volunteer Audio will do with your system. And because this is a really cool system, it's plug and play, and if you order it from Volunteer Audio, they're gonna send it to you ready to go. You don't have to do anything to the system other than install it. The tuning that is done prior to you getting the equipment is absolutely amazing. In fact, I met someone who also had a Soundstream radio and their system was freaking loud. They had this enormous uh, subwoofer in their saddlebag and they could not turn the volume all the way up because they would have distorted music. It sounded, it really didn't sound that great. 
but this I can crank it up to max volume and at 80, well, at 80 plus miles an hour, it sounds amazing. So properly tuning the radio makes a huge difference and a big shout out to Volunteer Audio for their expertise because that's just not something I would have thought of had I done this without their help. All right, so the uh, next thing I'm gonna talk about is a couple of observations that I made uh, while I was out on the road. Number one, I got stuck in some rain. I did not get any water in my saddlebags. I wasn't surprised because I've already tested my saddlebags uh, with a water hose and I put a ton of water in it, no problems there. The problem that I did have during the rain is I have my phone out here and I typically do not have a case on my iPhone. So when that happens, water can get into the lightning port or the charging port of the phone and the phone to protect itself will turn off the charging port. Now if your battery's low or if your battery, you know, if your battery's low and you can't get your navigation anymore, the Soundstream unit does not have a built-in nav system. So that's just something to be aware of. I'll probably invest in some type of waterproof case for when I'm on the road. So that's more of an Apple thing than or actually it's my thing because I don't put a case on my phone. But, you know, at the end of the day, I tried to put my phone into the glove box, but it wouldn't fit. You know, when you plug up the cable, uh, plug up your USB cable to the phone, it won't fit. Now, I now have an Apple uh, 12 Pro Max. It's just too big. So it's too big for the uh, uh, glove box. Uh, next thing I'll talk about, the uh, Soundstream unit has a display mode for day and night and you can toggle back and forth. The stock unit on the Harley will do that automatically. The Soundstream unit will not. I can tell you that I left mine in day mode whether I was riding in the day or at night and it made no difference, it didn't bother me. So I'm always gonna leave it in day mode, it, it's fine with me. Uh, next thing, uh, the temperatures. I was in 90 plus degree temperatures for hours and hours and it was brutal, <laughs> it's hot out there. Uh, the unit performed fine. There are absolutely no issues out there. But what I did have an issue with is fingerprints. Now on a road glide, this head unit is far away from you and because you can't control or manipulate the Apple CarPlay screen with the thumb controls, you're poking at the screen occasionally and you collect a bunch of fingerprints. Well, when the sun is coming from behind you and, uh, and it's hitting the screen directly, the bright sunlight plus those fingerprints kind of washes the screen out a little bit. It wasn't a big deal, but it's just an observation that I made. And so just something you need to be aware of. I, mean, I haven't played with the settings. Maybe I can make the screen a little bit brighter. I don't know, I didn't try. So on, an, on my next trip, I'll definitely give that a shot. So basically, uh, those are the things I wanted to cover. Again, the system performs phenomenally. Huge shout out to Jay from Volunteer Audio. I absolutely love the system. Uh, in fact, I will tell you this, if you do the same system that I did, it's going to spoil you for high quality audio because I have, since I've had the system installed on my bike, when I hear someone else's system, if it's not clear like mine, it doesn't sound good. So, and, and that's what's so amazing about this. And I honestly didn't understand uh, when I was working with Jay to get the system installed, but we turned it all the way up, crystal clear all the way. But it makes a difference when you're on the road because at, you know, at, at cruising speeds on the highway, I turned it all the way up. You know, so it really does make a difference having everything set up properly and they do everything for you. All the gains in the amplifier are set uh, and this system has a uh, built-in uh, equalizer. And so he even sets the equal, or he t he'll give you the settings that you need to get your equalizer so that the sound that's coming out is absolutely perfect with zero distortion at any frequency, whether it's highs or if it's your bass. It just sounds phenomenal. Absolutely love it. And since I've added this system, it honestly makes me want to ride the bike more because I just like to listen to my radio when I'm on the road and it just sounds so much better. Now, I do have some other cool videos coming up. Uh, uh, I'm going to... I'm still working on my install video because I did install this myself at the Volunteer Audio shop and so I'll have that video out but if you want to see it now you can go to Volunteer Audio's YouTube page and they have uh, you know a complete version of the install. Uh, the video that I'm going to do I'm going to modify it a little bit and focus on uh, what the challenge, challenges were or most challenging parts of it uh, for me 
but honestly nothing was really that hard but I'm just going to share with you some of my experiences with the install in that upcoming video and another video I'm working on and hope to have it out one of these days is the install for my painted interfering so the combination of my painted interfering and the Soundstream radio it just makes my bike look so much more modern and I really really like it so I'll have that install video coming out as well and I have a brand new product from Tab Performance that I'm going to install on my Street Glide and I'm going to show that to you right now. My new handlebars, these are manufactured by Tab Performance and these are the one and a half inch diameter bars and they look amazing. I really like the way they look and this gives you an opportunity to see how they look compared to my bars from KST. Now I love my KST bars as well but KST does not make the adjustable bars for a Street Glide. Now these are not adjustable but they look amazing and I'm looking forward to getting these installed. Hopefully I'll get around to it sometime this week because I'm going to install these bars. I'm going to add heated grips and I'm going to you know, obviously I have to change out the grips as well. So it's going to be a pretty cool install. And I'm even thinking about doing a live handlebar install. Has that ever been done? I don't know. Maybe I'll be the first. But in any event, uh, stay tuned for that video. Uh, the install for the tab Folsom bars on my 2022 street glass special so big shout out to all of the um, sponsors for my channel please make sure you give them some love and uh, consider ordering products from uh, advan black tab performance volunteer audio uh, sound streaming precision power they have been very supportive uh, of my small youtube channel and i absolutely appreciate it and if you decide to order any of their any of their products i'll have Links for you in the description of this video, and you can go check them out for yourself. This is Q. I'm riding, I'm wrenching, and I am out. Mm -hmm.